Okay. Let me just double check that we are actually streaming, Danny. Um, just let us check my phone and we'll, uh, we'll get started. Perfect. Let me just double check. Yeah, we're live and the audio is working, so we are pretty much ready to go. Danny, thank you for coming on uh, my podcast today. Welcome. Amazing. So I'm glad to have you on. Um, for anyone who doesn't know who Danny is or what she does, essentially she's an expert on immune health and gut health, and it's something that I'm not. So I thought it's going to be a perfect opportunity to get someone on who's cleverer than me, who's going to impact people at a higher level than I can in terms of health and gut health. So Danny, first off, who are you? What do you do? And, and what kind of problem do you solve and help people with? Okay, so um, I'm a holistic nutrition and wellness coach. Um, I'm also a yoga teacher. I'm also a life coach, motivational speaker, published author of Beauty and the Gut, um, which has been out for two years now on gut health and also immune health. Um, And I specialize in chronic illnesses and how to reverse and prevent chronic illnesses through the power of nutrition, as well as healing the gut, which is where 70 to 80% of your immune system is. So that is what I am all about. It's about creating wellness from the inside out. So everyone feels great. Yeah. Yeah, amazing, amazing. So that brings us on to the first point, really. I mean, you said yourself, 70 to 80 percent of chronic illnesses stem from poor gut health, did you say? Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? And obviously gut health's got everything to do with your nutrition, mm-hmm. you know? So tell us about the links between, obviously you mentioned 70, 80 percent, but tell us about the links between nutrition and your immune system. Like, What do we need to watch out for? What do we need to be aware of? So the major thing with your immune system is, um, which is what I cover in in the book that I wrote, it's about the beneficial bacteria that you've got inside your your gut, basically. So we are made up of more bacteria than cells, which we don't realize. So what we need to be paying attention to when we're looking into our health is the levels of good bacteria bacteria versus bad bacteria within yeah. your in your body in your gut especially um, and that's what people are unaware of um, because there's not a lot of I mean there's so much research out there but unless you're actually studying it like I am then you're not aware of it um, so when people start to get sick what I look into straight away is the levels of good and bad bacteria with inside their gut microbiome. Because if you don't have enough good microbes inside the gut, and the majority of the population today don't, because yeah. there are certain things that destroy the gut, and um, which we'll get into and we'll talk about that as well. So certain things destroy the gut, for example, one of them is antibiotics. And loads of people have been on antibiotics and they completely destroy the gut microbes all of your good bacteria all of your bad bacteria and unless you're actually doing things like putting probiotics into your gut to replace the the good bacteria that you've lost then you're going to spiral down a path where you start to develop certain health issues you know and it's not just the health issues like coming from my background so a little bit about me is i had chronic acne as a teenager and then I also a few few years later developed an autoimmune disease. So this is my background and why why I started to get into what I did and yeah. do. So it's like if you don't get this good these good microbes back into your body, then you will start to see deterioration. You will start to develop things like I mean I have lots of ladies with hormone problems because yeah. hormone problems also stem from inside your gut. Yeah, we're not aware of um. And then you've got all these chronic illnesses, like um, even Alzheimer's disease is linked to the gut microbes, um, yeah. cancer as well, diabetes. Like it, it's it's all connected. Like this, it's like your root. Um, it's your tree roots, basically. That's how I always describe it as. You've got these roots, and you need to keep feeding the soil so yeah. that everything else you nurture it and it you know grows into this beautiful tree or flower. But unfortunately, today we're just we're all just rotting, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing. So some fire information there. So again, I've always said this before. Like I work with people on that their diets and that their eating habits mainly to help people, you know, live better lifestyle habits, which improve their mindset, improve their bodies, obviously. Um, but in terms of getting it down as far as gut health and how other 
illnesses could be formed later down the line. That's something that is even new to me. So that's amazing to hear. But I even say to my clients, essentially the nutrition that you eat, what goes in your mouth, that's the fuel for your entire life. Yeah. Without a car, because I always say this, our body is our vehicle that transports us through life. You exactly. wouldn't your car like like rubbish, like you wouldn't go and piss in your petrol tank, would you? No, would exactly. Fuel in it. Yet when it yeah. comes to our bodies, it's an afterthought. You know what I mean? It's, it no wonder, is. it's no wonder we've got so many people with issues, both physically and mentally, because the nutrition, aka what they put in their mouth, is not the right fuel, isn't it? Yeah, no, they're not. We're just not, it's it's about the mindset as well. We're not mindful about what we're eating. It's just, yeah. you know, we, we do have busy lives and it's like, we'll just grab this and, you know, shove yeah. it down the mouth. And that's, and that's the other thing, yeah. like we're not even chewing our food properly. It's just, there's, there's no mindfulness there when we're eating. It's just, just put something down. I need to kind of feel full. Um, and it's not having an awareness of what that food is doing to your body. It's just, I want to feel full. Um, and it's, it's just so much more than that. Like I eat because I want to nurture myself and fuel my body with good yeah. things so that I look good, but it's not just about looking good. I want to feel good. I want to have energy. And, if and you I don't feel good, to- Diane, you look good by default because you can't not look good. If you feel amazing, you'll participate in the habits that make you look amazing because you'll feel your best. Exactly. I always tell yeah. my, it's not how you look, it's how you feel. Uh huh. You want to wake up every day and you want to have that energy to get on with the day. And, and I know like for my clients, they always tell me like the biggest thing is they have no energy yes. and they get to that three o'clock part of the day. It's always like the three o'clock part. And it's like, I've got no energy. And then that's when they start to eat more of the, the sugary kind of foods, carbohydrates, because they want to yeah. get on, you know, for the rest of the day. Um, and yeah, yeah. and if you just learn how to take care of your, your body with the right food, then you won't have that lack of energy and that oh, three o'clock oh. slump and eating the wrong oh. foods. And it's crazy that that, not having the energy to do what you want to do and feel the way you want to feel is not enough of a wake-up call for people to go, hang on, let's sort this out. Because again, relating it back to the car, if your car wasn't working properly and it was it was cutting out at a certain point of the day and you were stuck, you would go to a garage and say, listen, my car's not working. How yeah. can I solve this problem? Whereas it comes to our body, they don't do that or people don't do that. And I'm sure you've been there before. I've been there before when you're overwhelmed. Yeah, stress, it goes out of your mind. But when's the wake up call going to be? And unfortunately, we've just done a full circle here, which is brilliant. The wake up call is normally a health issue. Before it is. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean, that's what happened to me. Like I started off, I had chronic acne and, and obviously you go, I went to the doctor and everything and I was being prescribed antibiotics and things to, to get rid of my acne and it didn't work. It made it worse. Um, and that's where like, I then developed the autoimmune disease a few years later because I hadn't been, I'd wiped out all that good bacteria for a start, um, which is a cause of why I developed the autoimmune disease. Um, and then I had medic, I had my thyroid destroyed with medication. So I have to take medication for life now. Yeah, and, yeah. and because of the, the, the medication destroyed my body, it was only that wake up call where I was, I went from a size eight to a size 16 after the, um, the treatment that I had, I had radioactive iodine. And um, I started to binge on food, but the reason I did that was because I'd had my thyroid destroyed yeah. and my body was actually screaming out for, for nutrition because I'd had a radioactive treatment, which had destroyed everything in my body. Um, and because of that, my body was saying, you need nutrition. I didn't know that. So I was like, I was, I was reaching out for sugar. I was reaching out. For, I went for McDonald's. I was eating pizzas. And then I just ballooned in weight, developed depression, developed anxiety. And I was just down, going down this really nasty, awful path um, of self-destruction. Yeah. And then I had a wake up call where I was like, I need to actually sort myself out. Like, I don't want this to be me. Like I was this slim, health, like healthy ish person before I had this treatment. And I don't want to be this size 16 overweight off. Like I just felt awful and I had no energy. I was sleeping like, um, three, four o'clock in the afternoon. I was coming in from, I had, I was at uni, but I was, I had a, a part-time job and I was coming home falling fast asleep at like four o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm 19 years old. So yeah. that's not how I wanted to be and this is where I started to feel like I need to learn about nutrition and mm-hmm. um, and it started from there you know I just started to fuel my body with these new foods that I'd never even tried before and yeah, yeah. um, and I was like I started to feel better and I started to lose a little bit of weight and it was those things that I was like oh learning about how putting food into your body that is actually going to heal it rather than just make me feel full 
yeah. and actually not even give me energy energy when you have things like sugar yeah yeah again we, we seem to have lost that that touch with nature and what these things are because i think all of the answers for health and to treat ourselves is within nature, within our nutrition, within our habits, but we've become so out of touch with that because it, it, you mentioned it before, it's the busy lifestyles. It's the last 50 years or so where the world's just gone crazy and even more so now, that's what's affected people's health. Yeah. Because they're so overwhelmed and stressed within their life that mm -hmm. nutrition's an afterthought. Nutrition yeah. is, and obviously I've, I've got my own book, I've got my audio book called How to Stop Binge Eating and Finally Get In Shape. And one of the main points I say in that is it's not food you want, it's the feeling food gives you. So people are so overwhelmed with their life that they are sedating with quick fix foods, junk food. And you probably know the studies, they've seen the brain, parts of the brain light up, just like if someone was taking drugs or alcohol or another addictive yeah. pattern. It's lighting Absolutely. up dopamine and serotonin. And people are getting that hit because they feel so bad. So they're in this subconscious zone of, I just need food to make myself feel better. That food's not used as a, as a fuel. It's not used as something to, to heal you. It's just used as a quick fix. And that's all stemmed from the fact we've got so much overwhelming lives, you know, which that's what I help people kind of undo. So um, I understand that completely, but that leads me on to another point I wanted to make and kind of um, goes on to the next stage. What are some of the, if you had to say top three worst things that someone could unknowingly be doing to their immune system or their good health right now? So the biggest thing of all, especially like coming from a woman's perspective, um, women tend to go more to sugar especially like chocolate and around that time of the month as well we always like we have more cravings for sugary foods yeah. but the problem with sugar is I mean I say this it's the title in my book it's sugar is poison and um, so it's it creates so much chronic inflammation with, with inside the body so it creates like acne and things and um, but you're destroying the gut microbes as well they feed yeah. on the sugar um, and I know a lot of ladies have candida and and um, those kind of women's issues and it's the hormones as well like women have got real unbalanced hormones today yeah. because they're fellas we have it easy yeah. compared to compared to females we are right <laughs> we're, we're pretty natural we're pretty stable females <laughs> it's a lot different you know I, I work with multiple females obviously who, who I've, I've had to learn this by coaching so many people and um, yeah. can, can I just make one point clear Danny when you refer to sugar you mean mm. processed sugars yeah yes refined processed sugars i'm not talking about fruit here because i know people yeah, they, exactly. they um it's all like you can google it and they'll say like fruit's bad for you and blah 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 but How fruit is bad not for bad for you and that's what i want to try and change people's mindsets with as well like i actually used to believe the same thing as well when i was going through my trying to lose weight and you know i was counting calories and stuff i don't do any of that anymore um but Fruit is full of fiber, which is yeah. essential for your gut microbes because your gut, your good microbes feed on fiber. So you have to remember, we've got to have these good microbes in order to build a strong immune system. Then the other thing with your fruit is it's, an, it's high dose amounts of vitamin C. Again, vitamin C, I've been posting about this on social media like in the last week or so. That you cannot survive without vitamin C in your body. You have to have it. It's essential. So your yeah, yeah. vitamin C is coming from your yeah, vegetables. have got it as well. But obviously more of the vitamin C comes in your, your fruits. Yeah. And it's amazing how many adults, Danny, don't even eat fruit. They, uh, they don't. I know. It's crazy. crazy. Um, and like we need to be incorporating fruit every single day into your body. And they say like the recommended daily amount is just five supplies of it a day but you actually need more than that yeah so that's what I'm, I'm i'm trying to encourage more people to eat is is the fruit content because you do need that fiber you do need the antioxidants the polyphenols that come with it as well and um, and all of that is going to protect your body because you have something else known as oxidative stress which is basically like imagine you're going back to the car so as your car gets older, it starts to rust, right? If you've not been taking care of it. Well, it's the same inside the body as well. If you're not putting things inside your body to stop the rusting from happening, then it's going to deteriorate. So what these mm -hmm. antioxidants do it's, uh, from the fruit is they stop your body from rusting. So that's why we need to have more fruit. Yeah. Another reason. <laughs> yeah, amazing. So again, three worst things that people can do for their immune health right now so one of them i've said refined sugar avoid all refined of that and um, now the other one is it's wheat and gluten as well it's another one and um, 
But the problem with that is it's in so much food. Um, and this is why we're seeing, like I have loads of clients who've got irritable bowel syndrome and um, massively like a huge big issue. Um, and irritable bowel disease is a lot of clients that I have with Crohn's disease, um, which I know is quite huge in, in South Tyneside. Um, yeah, I've got multiple clients who've got Crohn's. Yeah. So gluten and wheat are two big major things um, because they irritate the gut lining and you've got um, this known as leaky gut, which is also in my book, which is caused by, again, certain foods. Gluten and wheat are, are you know, like one of the main ones that causes leaky gut, which is when your small intestine starts to rip apart and huge big holes are in it. Um, and then they go, these, the food particles slip through the small intestine, they go into your bloodstream, and this is what can cause an autoimmune reaction. So sugar, gluten, and the other one is actually dairy. Yeah. But again, these are three things that I know are top on people's food lists every day, sugar, dairy, and gluten. Yeah. So I, I get a lot of these questions off my clients sometimes, and my response is it's always the abuse, not the use. So if you're hammering dairy, if you're hammering processed sugars, if you're hammering gluten, you might get some issues. Whereas if you know that, okay, I'm going to limit those foods, would you say cut them out completely or just limit them? Because I'm always under the, the band that if you limit them and you manage other areas of your health, you'll be okay. It depends. Like if, if you, for example, you've got a client who's got Crohn's disease or any other, you know, even acne, skin problems and eczema skin as well. Skin problems is all caused by diet. I've always said Oh, that. absolutely. Yeah. So if you've got a health issue or a skin issue, you've got to remove them. They have to be removed yeah, you want, remove if you them. want to heal. If you are someone who hasn't got any issues, absolutely. Like it's really? about finding, like I'm always saying, finding this balance between the good and the bad. I don't yeah. expect anyone to be Miss Perfect. Like I'm pretty sensible with what I eat because I've had an autoimmune disease. So I'm like, I'm not touching that. <laughs> yeah, like I'm going to hold my hands up. I'm not willing to give up bread exactly yeah so it's just finding that balance like as long as so when you eat like if you have a huge big let's say um i don't know a huge big plate of pasta right and then you complement that with like the next day you might have loads of fruit so you're balancing it out because you've, yeah. you've had I, a lot of fruit, yeah. I would rather have a big bowl of fruit than sweets because i feel amazing after eating fruit yeah it's yeah. so that's that's all it is it's just finding like that that balance every day for a, for a normal healthyish person. Yeah. Amazing. If you want to have that little piece of dairy chocolate, you know, go ahead, yeah. but just don't hammer it, like you said. Yeah. I think a good point would be with maybe meet in the middle, maybe someone like me who's not willing to go up bread and gluten and things, but if you're having some oats, just get the gluten-free ones because you don't notice the difference. You know, maybe with pasta, get gluten-free pasta, you know, and just do little swaps like that and then just limit. I've noticed a big difference with uh, my... My gut health the past few years, I was like an ex-bodybuilder. I used to compete in bodybuilding shows. I was eating 300 grams of protein, all from animal products at one point. And yeah. I actually had to go to hospital. They thought it was something to do with my gallbladder. We're going to do a scan and everything, but it kind of turned out it was just IBS because I was eating so much um, meat, animal meat products and dairy. Yeah. And I was eating loads of vegetables to bulk up my meals. Mm -hmm. And I was ripped. I had a six pack, yet I had this very rounded bloated stomach that was constantly in pain like i literally had to go to hospital i thought something had burst inside of me and it was yeah. all from that and once i lowered my protein down to about 200 grams a day cut out as much animal products the the, the back uh, sorry not back to you at the um the feeling was insane compared to what i felt like before so that's just probably lowering the amount of bacteria that was you know bad bacteria or good bacteria i'm not sure the, the ratio just by limiting the amount of animal and dairy protein that was coming i noticed a huge difference i never get ibs anymore yeah it is like that's with ibs it's because you've got too much of the it's it's good and bad bacteria but they're in your small intestine and they should be in your large intestine and if you've mentioned the meat as well like meat does it changes the gut microbiome so it it makes you produce more bad bacteria yeah. so that's the other thing like i'm plant-based you know like i don't eat any meat products but i do yeah. Say to my clients, like, I'm not telling you to be plant-based, like I'm not oh, yeah. pushing it on anyone, but I do want you to reduce the amount that you're eating um, and find good sources of meat as well. You know, you need to be looking into more of the organic side because it's better for the meat, the meat, hormone health. And and that. Like it's pumped full of the stuff, the stuff that comes out of it. I mean, exactly. What is it? Yeah. So I don't know. So yeah, it's like it's it is feeding more of the bad microbes when you're having meat but complement it with that 
fiber from the vegetables than you get in the good bacteria in at the same time. So yeah. finding that it's, it's just weighing everything up all the time. Yeah. Balance yeah. is key. One, th one thing I like to look at it, my meals, if it looks colorful, I know I'm, I know I'm good. If it's looking very beige and bland, there ain't enough nutrients there. So, you know, I say yeah. to my clients, obviously I get them to track calories and stuff because I'm trying to help them with their body weight and, and lose weight. I think it's it's almost impossible unless you're very knowledgeable like yourself to be able to drop weight without having an idea of calories. But these people I'm helping with, they've obviously got macro targets, calorie targets to aim for. But if they're not eating enough fruits and vegetables, I've always said there'll be a cutoff point between, you know, physiology in terms of losing weight within your calorie balance and then health will be a cutoff point where you can't just focus on foods you've got to focus on health food quality as well so it is all yeah. about in terms of managing your weight but food quality has got to be high and one thing i say is like show me photos mm. of your meal like what kind of stuff you're eating and i always say if it's not colorful like i have probably two meals a day now of meat whereas before i was having four maybe it's like 200 grams of chicken 200 yeah. grams of beef, or maybe a fish or whatever and there's always multiple servings of vegetables and fruits for snacks after that so my i've, I've got a very good immune system like personally i'm never ill i've had the flu once in my life when i was about 10 I haven't had a cold in about six yeah. just because of my diet is non negotiable to eat a certain amount of fruits and veg and I get exercise. So that brings us on nicely to the next points. Top three best things you can do for your immune system that anyone can do. We're not talking about anything fancy, just basic changes that you can focus on. The, the number one thing people need to do is eat more fiber. Eat more fiber. Because um, like we're seeing, I know in South Tyneside as well, there's a lot of people developing um, bowel cancer and the reason why people develop bowel cancer is because they're not eating enough fiber. It's massively missing in, in their diet. And it's that fiber, because you've got two kinds of fiber, you've got soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Yeah. And these fibers both work differently to feed the good microbes. So you've yeah, got yeah. your rough fiber from broccoli, cauliflower, all of those kind of cruciferous vegetables, which feed the colon bacteria and they also act as roughage to clean out the colon. So your colon is the size from head to your toes and it's the width of your wrist. And you know, like it's all mangled up inside of you. So if you're not eating enough fiber to push food out and the going back, like I'm oh, always talking about the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. if you're not going to the toilet every single day, that's another thing. I have clients who've told me like, yeah. don't go to the toilet every day. Same, I say one thing, psyllium husk, get that supplement. Yeah, you've got to go to the toilet every day and you've, you've got to, it does. Yeah, it's so you've the, the fiber, so the rough fiber from the Christmas vegetables is working on the colon and it's cleaning that out. So I, I always say like, like it's in my book, it's, it's it's a vacuum cleaner. That's what I want you to think of broccoli. It's, it's a vacuum cleaner, cleaning all that the bad stuff out of your colon. And then you've got your things like your oats and, and white potatoes as well. White potatoes is something that people normally avoid because it's so out there bad. like it's high on the GI. Yeah. But it's actually a soluble fiber, which feeds the good microbes, which will help with the small intestine. Yeah. Um, so number one thing for the immune system is eat more fiber. It also allows the um, something known as short chain fatty acids. One of them is called butyrate. And that works to heal the small intestine if you've got leaky gut. And the majority of the world population now have a leaky gut due to yeah. their lifestyles. Chronic stress hours. also causes it. Yeah. So how, how many grams a day as a general ballpark would you say aim for your fiber? There isn't really a, a guideline for fiber because we're all different. Yeah. Um, and... I, like I always say with people, you, you've got to find what works for you. Like with every meal that I have, it's always got fiber on. And yeah. the question that I get from people as well is what is fiber? People don't know what fiber is. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have the chrysalis vegetables. You've got to have oats. You've got to have things like chickpeas, kidney beans, and um, black beans. Black beans are amazing if you want more high of the protein. And um, I don't know if you're having them, but they're amazing for high protein. Um, and then fruits, I've just mentioned that one, haven't I? All of these are fiber foods and they should be having, but when you start to develop more bloating, then you need to maybe cut back a little bit. Yeah. It just depends on you. And like, if you've got people who've got irritable bowel syndrome, initially it might cause more bloating. So you have to step back a little bit on the fiber. Mm -hmm. And then coming into, like we mentioned the water content, if you're not drinking enough water, 
Not flushing. You're eating too yeah. much fiber, you're going to start yeah. to get bloated. Yeah. It's the water that will push out the fiber. Yeah, I think that's a main issue as well. We've seen like the worst things people do. And I hold my hands up. Very rarely I'll just sit and drink water. I'm drinking coffee, I'm drinking protein shakes, I'm having a little bit of diet coke, which is fine, you know, but I should drink more water. Um and I do more than I used to, but again, that's something so simple that everyone can do that'll massively help um digestion. Cause I, I've been that person for years who I just put up with my bad digestion. I was always, you know, bad gas you know, just not feeling good, feeling bloated, stomach pains, and I just put it off, like, oh, well, whatever. Most people will spend their whole life like that, feeling bloated, like, you say that all the time, what's your main problem? I'll ask people, oh, I'm just bloated all the time, I'm just, yeah. I'm like, well, does that not tell you that you're eating the wrong things? Like, you're getting symptoms here that are giving you <laughs> feedback, and you are ignoring it, you know? So it took me a few years to realise I shouldn't feel this bad, and now my digestion's perfect. I'm never, never, yeah, I'm never bad sure. gas, I'm never... I've never bloated and never have anything, you know, bad. And if I do now, I know exactly what it's caused by. It's caused by eating junk food. If I have like a takeaway or any kind of junk food, my digestion for the next day is awful. And I'm like, that's yeah. not worth it to me anymore. No, exactly. It's about listening to your body, which yeah. a lot of people have disconnected from. And yeah. um, so overwhelmed. So it goes to... back to that point again. They're so busy, stressed, overwhelmed, they just don't even care. The first thing to go out the window when you're busy and overwhelmed and stressed, self care and nutrition and looking after your, your exercise is self care. Yeah. You know, self care is not just putting a cucumber on your eyes and lying back at a spa. You know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's fun. You know, self care is loving your body. And I think if we were to ask most people that question now, do you love your body? They couldn't give you, you couldn't give you an answer where they said yes. No, they wouldn't. Definitely not. So again, taking responsibility for health. I say this to my clients a lot. You obviously do it through your whole thing. What do we mean by taking responsibility for our health? What do we need to do to know that we've got clarity on our health? Firstly, like the mindset has to be changed. Yeah. You, without changing the mindset, you're never going to be able to get into new habits. And you've got to think about... I, I always try and break it down easy for people because it, it does get overwhelming. Like, especially when I'm trying to teach people, I've got so much like I want to say and bring to people and they're like, it's too much. Yeah. <laughs> so right. you have to just break it down in the easy steps. First thing is make a goal today of I'm just going to drink more water. And you stick to that goal. And they say like, it takes three to six months to develop a new habit to actually make it stick. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow, start a next new habit where it could just be today I'm going to eat X amount Y of fruits. Yeah. It's just starting easy little things. I'm not telling you to go out now and remove the gluten, remove the dairy, remove the sugar, remove everything you've been eating because you're just going to be like, ah, oh, I'm not doing that. It's That's too much. That's what most people do when they try to start a new habit. It's the overwhelmed. They're already overwhelmed, which brings them to the point when they feel so low is I need to change. And then yeah. they try and change by changing too many things at once. So they're overwhelmed in a different way. And what do they do? They just go back to where they were before. Rather yeah, exactly. Than, what's one thing that I can do that's going to improve my health today? That could be aiming for a water target, like you said, hitting 10,000 steps, mm -hmm. you know, cutting out processed sugars and eating more fruit. Those are baby steps that you can nail, you know, and get that you can get your brain to kind of integrate it as a habit. Yeah, because I've, I've done a little bit of study on the brain. I'm not going too deep, but your own habits are ingrained like train tracks in your brains and your neurons. You heard of myelin? The myelin is like the learning sheath that allows, it's like electricity currents going through neurons. It forces you to remember. So the more you do something, you do it without thinking. Like driving a car, we do it without thinking because yeah. we've done it many times the myelin is formed around that particular habit. Your brain remembers how to do it. So whether it's three to six months to learn a new habit, whatever that may be, it's quite hard to measure. But essentially it's like your brain's learning and it'll start doing it for you. So you can't give your brain 10 things to do at once that you've never done before. Your brain just won't be able to do it. You'll feel overwhelmed. It'll short circuit. You'll go back to what you were doing before that you're used to. Yeah, so my camera's just gone off there. It, you're still on mine. I can still see you. Okay, yeah. we'll continue. Yeah, so it is like just rather than overwhelming yourself, you do need to just do little baby steps. Yeah. And then the more baby steps you do, eventually you will hit your target of wherever it is that you want to be. Yeah. So, yeah, it just start, start slowly. Start slowly. And start at the start. It's a very cliche thing where people say, Sam, I don't know where to start. I always say, start at the start. It's the best place to start. What would you do if you had to do one thing? Like you can only start with one thing. You can only do one thing at a time. Uh -huh. you know, so the start is literally just like saying, picking a target, I'm going to drink more water today. Get used to it, nail it, right, what's the next thing? That's that's how you start taking responsibility for your health, really. 
Um, Absolutely. But yeah, but yeah, kind of the last thing we need to cover, big elephant in the room right now, the whole thing going on with the pandemic, <laughs> right? Yeah. And there is people, like we've mentioned before, who are not taking responsibility for their health. And unfortunately, those people are going to be more prone to develop this virus. So for some real life practical advice right now, what can you tell people that you have to do or you should do to manage your immune system and health to protect yourself from this virus during this time? So at this moment, I'm busy writing my next book, which is how to beat coronavirus naturally. Um, and what I've been mentioning a lot on my social media this this um, last few weeks is there are three essential supplements. And just to make it easy, because I actually had a friend who said to me, but uh, Danny, she's had Corona. Um, and she was like, Danny, I can't be like you. I can't be healthy. And I was like, I'm not asking anyone to be as strict as me with their diet. You don't have to be like me. Again, that, I'm saying that, is, sorry for interrupting. That goes back to the overwhelming yourself. The, the want to change and they think they've got to do ex anything that extreme. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. So all I'm saying to people is, Take three supplements just to support your immune system. The first supplement is vitamin C. It, it needs to be a higher dose. And um, the second supplement is zinc. And the third supplement is vitamin D3 with um, K2. So these are three essential supplements that will support your immune system. And now like I'm looking into all of the studies that they've done on COVID patients and yeah. who has had severe symptoms and who's been okay with it. And they have found that those with um, no C, no D or zinc are the ones that are more prone to yes. getting Corona um, and also those who have, you know, died from coronavirus as well. Yeah, yeah I know. So rather than like we've been saying, getting overwhelmed with, I've got to, I've got to do this, I've got to do that and la 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 la, just think about those three supplements. That's all I want people to do. Yeah. Um, and then as we are, have mentioned the gut bacteria, like again, I've gone into the new studies with COVID and they found that the gut bacteria is also playing a huge role in, in how people develop it. And I've been reading people's comments as well, saying that um, they've had the, the virus and the symptoms are still there. It's been there for months and months and it's not going away. So long term, I want people to also think about their gut microbes because you, your gut microbes may be preventing you from actually getting well from the virus. Yeah. So we need to think about the lifestyle choices that you've had in the past, whether you've taken that. these overloaded, if you've had an overload of antibiotics, then high chances are your, gut, your good microbes have gone. And this could be why you're not recovering from the virus. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing information. Like, I mean, since this whole thing started, I've been looking at it from a point of view, like there's some information that people aren't focusing on. They are simply focusing on the symptoms and how to manage like the virus on the back end. Mm -hmm. like, basically what are the government telling them to do? Stay indoors, wash their hands, you know, avoid contact. Whereas by doing that, you're missing out all that, all that bad bacteria that you essentially need. Yeah. And um, you're not getting enough vitamin D because you're not going outside. Mm -hmm. And the lockdown measures, the restrictions, make people feel more lonely where they are more likely to participate in eating junk food. So all of those yeah. things are essentially making it harder to recover or to not get coronavirus, which is crazy for me right now. So right at this point, we can't change the government's decision about what they, how they are handling their virus. We're not going to get into that debate because it's pointless. But right now, everyone can protect themselves from this virus by doing those things, by supplementing, by understanding that they are more likely to catch the virus or potentially die from the virus if they don't prioritize their health so yeah. a lot of people are scared of this virus right now but they are not doing anything about their health so this is the cutoff point here this is the this is the craziness that health professionals like me and you are looking at going hang on this is not this is not this is not right like so people anyone listening right now please regardless of what your stance is on the virus you can't ignore that there's certain things that you can participate in every day that'll massively protect you from it so Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's no brainer, isn't it? It is, yeah. And I know there are people at home and they, they don't want to leave the house. And but as you say, like when you're at home, you are emotionally eating and then you're you're in this spiral of the, the fear as well. The fear is weakening people's immune system. What is all stress um, hormone? It's very stressful for people. And the, the thing with stress and fear is they, they also destroy those good microbes. Yeah. So we need to find ways of um, let's just switch off the mainstream media for a start and, and focus on things that you can actually do to support your immune health so that yeah. you're not going to get sick with the virus and yeah. be more in a positive mindset. I think 
there's just too much negativity at the minute, you know? And um, so yeah. it's about being more positive. This is what I can actually do to help my body, support my body by putting in these essential vitamins. And then rather than just sitting on the couch all day, watching TV and emotionally eating or whatever, get up and do some exercise because we do need to move. We do need that for our mind, our mental health more than anything right now. Otherwise, you know, like mental health is a huge thing right now because we're in, we're in our houses all the time. I know, it's, um, not, it's not good, yeah. No, it's not. So, you know, get outside for your, your exercise when you can and just do some movement. Like just do things that are actually positive for your health. I know, like right now, Danny, there's so many people sitting in the house. They're off work, they're bored, they're lonely, they're, yeah. they're stressed. They might even be a little bit depressed. Right yeah. now, they might be lacking a purpose. Well, we've just given some amazing information out here that's now give them a chance for a purpose. Like if you are sitting in the house and you haven't got a lot going on right now, please don't waste that time just doing all of those things. That's going to make your immune system worse because the yeah. very thing that you're fearful of catching this virus, which I appreciate and understand some people are, and that's cool, that's okay. I understand, I get it. But by not taking responsibility of your of your health during this time and just staying in the house, not really exercising, eating junk, you are doing the worst thing possible, which is the exact thing you are fearful of. The thing doesn't make sense. And unfortunately, like you said before, mainstream media, they are totally avoiding this and they are putting one-sided views out there. Okay, and we're not saying that they're wrong. We're just saying that there's also all of this stuff that you can be doing as well. Yeah. So anyone who's been lacking a sense of purpose, feeling like they haven't got anything to focus on right now, you, you've got the perfect opportunity and some real life action steps you can take right now, you know, supplementing with vitamin C, with zinc, you know, increasing your fruits, increasing your vegetables, increasing your water, lowering the amount of processed sugars. We've got some targets we can aim for, you know, mm -hmm. which is, you know, everyone talks about doing our bit to manage the virus, wearing masks, doing it, and that's great. But really doing our bit to manage the virus is also looking after our own health. Because if less, if less people yeah. are more likely to get it, less likely to spread and less likely to affect other people. So managing the exactly. virus with the ways we've got with the lockdowns and social restrictions, it's just as important to do this. Absolutely. Yeah. So we all just need to change the mindset. And yeah, it all stems from that. About things. You know, like I'm yeah. always like everything in life happens for a purpose. Maybe this is your wake up call to now actually start paying attention to your health because yeah. you've not been doing anything for, yeah. for the for the last few years or so you know like now's the time do yeah. something if you really don't want to get sick then start paying attention to your own well-being this is what is my mission for people to just bring you really fabulous wellness and um, in until you get old yeah forever well, that's what we're here for why why are we on this planet if we are not here to have health and abundance amazing intimate passionate relationships and you can only have that if your body serves you Again, back yeah. to the vehicle. If your vehicle's breaking down every five minutes, it's not going to get you to your destination. So whatever your destination is, your idea of this is how I want my life to be, that's how I'll be most fulfilled. You've got to have a vehicle that's going to allow you to get there. And you can't ignore the things we've talked about today because that is the bread and butter of it. And, and I'm just going to, you know, last thing I'll say is it's, it is crazy to me and a little bit frustrating that the virus thing is going on right now and the way it's being managed, I understand that, but I can't change it. But there's so many people who are doing these things to avoid getting the virus that they are actually doing things on the, the back end without even knowing that is more than likely to, to give them the virus. So it doesn't make sense to me the way this is being handled right now. And I'm glad we've had the chance to do this uh, podcast today, Danny, because we've, we've, spat, we've spat some fire out there that anyone can do, like no one can, can you know, can find a barrier to not do these things. Like all of these things are realistic targets that we can all do on a daily basis to improve our health. So mm -hmm. yeah, we've give some we've give some amazing thing. There's anything you wanted to give one final message if you had to give one piece of advice, summarize what your mission, what your purpose is, what would it be? My whole mission is to make everyone feel well. Like that's yeah. that's what I'm always I've always been about. I've been doing this for years now. And um, I don't want people to be in pain, suffering, and I definitely don't want anyone to be fearing this virus neither. Yeah. Um, and it's just, yeah, my whole thing is just about creating wellness for everyone to feel good. Um, and if you are stressed, like I am a yoga teacher as well, so I am about mindfulness. And, yeah, brilliant. Um, brilliant. You know, like we need to take that time to focus on our stress management because I know life gets stressful. I know people are stressed with this virus as yeah. well. So find some time 
to do some breathing or um, even if it's just exercise, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be yoga, but we do need to find that time to manage your stress because stress is a huge killer, you know, it like it, it can the kill you. for everything because your, your behaviors that you have with your lifestyle habits and your health will be stemmed from how you feel about yourself in your life. You're stressed all the time. You're not going to make good decisions with your, your life, are you? You're going to no. make decisions out of fear, out of quick fixes, out of sedation, which is not going to get your body or your life to where you want it to be. Yeah. So where can where can people find it, Danny? Where are you got a website? Where can they get your book? Where can they follow you? All right. So I have a website. It is www.holisticdanny111.co.uk. And um, I'm also on Instagram at Holistic Danny. And you can find me on Holistic Danny Facebook. And I'm also on Danny Jackson Facebook. You can add me there as well. Amazing. So if you want to buy my book, Beauty and the Gut, um, <laughs> it's available worldwide. Um, you can get it everywhere. So it's all over the place. You can get it on Amazon, eBay, just Google it and it will come up. And that's available. And I'm busy writing how to beat coronavirus naturally. Um, so hopefully that will be done in a few more weeks. Wow. And, um, yeah, if you follow me on any of my social media sites, then I'll be posting about it. Doing something positive during lockdown. I love it. It's what it's all about, isn't it? What it's it is. All That's what you have to do. Like, if you are um, struggling with finding things to do, like, this is your opportunity to find your, your purpose in life. You know, like, things happen for a reason. No, don't just sit on the couch and be miserable. Like, just... I know. Otherwise, you lose twice then if you do that because we can't change reality and then you lose inside your head as well because you dwell on the things you can't do. So we might as well put our attention on things that give us energy, create energy, yeah. create better opportunities, you know. So, uh, yeah, well done for doing that. And obviously, good luck with the with the new book and good luck with your clients as well because I'm sure you are stout off right now. I know I am certainly, um, you know, but it's it's amazing to see. Obviously, I'm, I'm involved in very something very similar, a little bit different, but... I know how much reward I get personally out of helping people. So I can tell you get that as well. And it is wonderful, isn't it? Helping people. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Love it. <laughs> and it gives, it gives us a purpose as well. So, you know, thank you to everyone who has, you know, believed in us and trusted us and, and valued what we say, because it does make us feel good as well. But you guys know where to find Danny, anyone watching the podcast, the replay, um, it'll be streamed on YouTube as well. So I'll upload that. Um, so, yeah, some fantastic information about how to manage your gut health and immune health during this time. So, Danny, I will definitely have to do this again. Maybe we could do a, you know, every few weeks, a month, you know, a little bit of an update on managing health because there's normally no one in especially our local area doing it right now. So we'll definitely yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do this again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sounds amazing. great. Right. I will let you go, Danny. Thank you for the uh, the podcast. It was amazing. You have a uh, wonderful day. See you, Danny. All take right. Bye. Take care. Okay.